everybody, welcome to Wrestling Remembered, the show that likes to uh, bring you back to the good old days of professional wrestling. I, my name is Joe. What a day, Lowry. And of course, this week we're talking the old wrestling magazines. That's right, folks. How important they were to us as youngsters growing up and so forth. This is all pre-internet days, too. So, you know, we're going to be going through the, um, the good times of that. But first, let me introduce my esteemed colleagues. First up, he is the brother from another mother. He is the poet laureate of Money in the Pharaoh Channel and a worthy challenger for my De 30 championship. Let's welcome to the show, Mr. Benny Scala, a.k.a. The Player. Welcome, Benny. Thank you. Talk about my, my childhood wrestling magazines. Man, oh, man. How important they were. This is going to be a good. I have a feeling this is going to be a good episode, so I'm looking forward to it. All right, next up, he hails from the great state of Massachusetts. He's the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. He has the pecs that wrecks. He is the president of Thursday nights, nice. Mr. Phil DeCesare. Phil, welcome, brother. Oh, thanks, Joe. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. Let's talk about some of the after nags tonight. This is good stuff. You know, yeah. of all the things that I've loved and lost, I've always yeah. kept my magazine. So There you go. There you yeah. go. And finally, he is the Thursday night disciple. He's the man who wears the stripes on wrestling's hottest game show to 30. In high school, he sold concert tickets while wearing those sunglasses. And no, we're not <laughs> talking about Mike Damone. Let's go. Oh, yeah. He is welcome, welcome, brother. Five-point plan. What is going on, gentlemen? Another fine Friday night. Absolutely. Look at this panel we have here. Wow. And as always, a great shout-out to everyone who's joining us live on the replay and everybody in the chat. You know, I logged on at 10 of and, boy, everybody's already booming and banging over there. Maria, Phil, everybody, Jason, Fox O, Willie, welcome. Everybody, Beth Hopper in the house. Great to have you on here. So let's get let's kick it off, folks. This is a, a fun, you know, this is the fun part of this stuff. Uh, wrestling magazines. We all had them growing up. Um, if you didn't know what they were, real quickly, just to give you a little history on the wrestling backgrounds before we start going around here. Uh, I found uh, the first one, the first wrestling magazine was from 1951. This is the only one that's known print that's still around. Uh, wow. This was going for eBay for like over $300 too, by the way. Uh, wow. But this was January of 1951. It cost you a whole entire 25 cents. Damn. Uh, Antonina Rocco was in there. They did say that Bruno San Martino was in there, but I don't even know if he was wrestling. No, that's no not till no. 59, I think. Yeah, right, Benny? Right. Yeah. So you, had, you had all those guys in there too. And then I'm going to segue this into the Ring Wrestling Magazine. Um, this one goes, uh, what year was this one? This is 1966. Couldn't even tell you who the ladies were. I just thought it was great that the ladies actually graced the cover of this magazine. And this was September of 66. And look at the price, 50 cents on that one. But, uh, just to give you a quick background, Stanley Weston, I'm sure you guys all have his magazines right now. Stanley Weston publisher. He started out as an artist painting boxers for the ring magazine, believe it or not. Now, Weston's work in publishing history was interrupted by World War II when he served in the U.S. Army from 41 to 46. He returned to civilian life and the Ring Magazine to 1946, but he left the publication in 51 and once again uh, returned, again, decorated war veteran. He served in the Korean War. So when he got out of there, he launched Boxing Illustrated Wrestling News in 1958, and he published that until 64, successfully competing with the Ring Magazine. Now, the following year, Weston began pump, pump, uh, publishing Wrestling Review, which soon became the best-selling wrestling magazine in the world. Now, at the height of its popularity, Weston sold the highly successful magazine to Burt Sugar, Lou Eskin, and Norman Kaiser. And they went on to publish under the name GC London Publishing. These magazines you all have, I know now, The Wrestler, Inside Wrestling, Wrestling Yearbook, Wrestling Annual, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, World Boxing and Boxing International. And, of course, it was in 1970 when uh, Weston uh, ensured access to wrestling's most important celebrities. Where is he? There he is by hiring this 25-year-old kid named Bill Apter uh, who cultivated the friendships with the biggest stars over the year. The rest is history. If you have a wrestling magazine, chances are you have a photo or photos that were taken by Mr. Bill Apter. And I got to tell you guys, I know you're, you guys are chomping at the bit going around the room here. Um, this is, to me, this was the epitome of being a wrestling fan. That second Tuesday of every month, running home from school, running running 
from school to home to get your money to go right to the newsstand and buy every single wrestling magazine. Of course, I shared with you guys earlier that I would uh, get a bottle of Coke and have some razzles, and I just loved it. And I was I was gone into the world of professional wrestling for at least two, three hours uh, that night. So uh, let's go around the room. Phil, I know you got some goodies. What do you got for us? Yeah, for me, it was on Monday. Monday was the magical day. And I think it might have been a couple Mondays each month, or at least I would go each Monday and pick up one magazine or maybe two. And by month's end, I could have anywhere between five and seven wrestling magazines, depending on the month from, you know, all the brands. And, you know, a buck and a quarter. Then I went up to a buck 50. And uh, my snack of choice, well, during Easter, it was the the Cadbury cream egg. And a and a can of of Coca Cola or something like that or Pepsi even too and I can yeah. almost hear the sizzling in my teeth after yeah. eating and drinking that sort of concoction you know but uh, yeah it was the first time I really I think read for joy you know I started getting into baseball magazines sure. Red Sox had um, oh, yeah. a periodical out so that kind of wet my appetite but then when I saw that that bloody cover of Harley Race and Tommy Rich oh yeah I knew there was no turning back I knew I knew it was one of those life choice moments there and the rest yeah. is history yeah now the player you're no stranger to wrestling magazines you actually even grace the inside of a wrestling magazine oh, yeah yeah right i think i got that right here there we are there's the pen pal a there young is. player november 1960 <laughs> where was i was just born oh my god i was what august three four months old there but that that's the actual cover of the magazine that you were in betty you remember that getting is, that wrestling magazine yes and on the back, I think you could learn to be a TV repairman and make up to $5 an hour. Wow. Not yes. bad. So not bad. I, real quick, I want to tell my story. So sure. I remember the day, the yeah. exact day. It was May 23rd, 1968. Wow. And the reason why I know that is my next door neighbor, who's my best friend, it was his birthday. Yeah. And uh, he, he was going to the Huntington Mall, Huntington, Long Island. Okay. Uh, for his birthday. My mom let me go with him, you know, cut, cut. You know, just stay home from school. Sure. And I remember, you know, I brought a whole bunch of money. And the, right when I got into the mall, and I had just, I had gone to my first show a couple of months earlier right. at the Allen Garden. So uh, I was actually, I, I wasn't even thinking about wrestling magazines. Uh, but we got in right to the, when you got into the mall, right to the left was a bookstore. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll uh, get a Mad Magazine. Or, you know, Mad sure. Magazine used to make the books. Oh yeah. Those books. oh yeah, yeah. Spy versus the spy, and yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all that, yeah. I, I saw, I, I think, Wrestling World, Wrestling Review, the wrestler, in, and Inside Wrestling. So after about six minutes in the mall, I was broke, money wise. <laughs> but I, but I was, I mean, I could not wait to get home to read those magazines. You know, and the first, my very first imp- thought was when I opened, I saw all these all these strange guys that I had never seen on TV. Yeah, and I thought, who are these guys? I thought everything, you know, all of wrestling was what I saw from the uh, National Arena in sure. uh, Washington D.C. on Channel yeah. Forty Seven on Saturday night. So what? What a you know, what an eye opener! And I mean, every I don't even know remember what day of the month it was, but you know, I there was a luncheonette uh, that I used to walk uh, visit when I walk home from school. Sure, and I'd always check for a new magazine, and I still remember that feeling when I saw something that I didn't have. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had no, just no 99% of my discretionary income during my teen years was spent on wrestling magazines. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, the referee ESO, I see you have a nice, the 30 shirt on there. Hey, absolutely. My, the show. <laughs> my 10% Venmo must've kicked in, but, uh, <laughs> nonetheless, you got some magazines. I love the background, by the way. Love it. I got some Slim Jim stuff back there. Yeah, you know. I've, I've got both of the both of the Macho Man uh, Slim nice. Jim containers that came out over the past couple of years. I've got Beautiful. some classic stuff. I've got like Terry Funk from uh, the original LJNs and some of the original Bendies, and nice. then even even into some modern stuff up into well, the most recent stuff like the Hasto collectible Duke Drosy over here. Sure. But uh, yeah. wrestling magazines, yeah, I, I, they were. One of the most important parts of uh, of my childhood. I got exposed to them around 1985, 84, yep. 85. My grandfather uh, started buying them for me. And unfortunately, my earliest ones, most right. of them were destroyed because I would cut them up and put them up on my wall because oh, yeah. I was a kid that was and that's what you did. Yeah. But, uh, I got to say, you know, there, I mean, there were so many, so many cool things that I got to find out about other, you know, being in the Northeast, WWF was hammered down your throat. Oh, yeah, but, definitely. 
those magazines were your your outlet to see the rest of the wrestling world. It was our uh, internet. I always said that was our internet back then. Now, for me, before cable, in 81, I became a fan. I didn't get cable till 82. I already had an idea of who the NWA was, AWA, uh, Puerto Rican wrestling, and all that stuff. And that was because I bought the wrestling magazines, and you were exposed to it. I had no idea there were three world champions. You know, you had Bob Backlund, you had Dusty Rhodes or Ric Flair in the NWA. But it always seemed to be Nick Bockwinkle in the AWA yeah. for years. Yeah. Um, but just go back. I pulled up some uh, older issues here. Wrestling Review. Uh, here's one here with Bruno on the cover. And here's one of the other ones from early on in the 50s. Boxing Illustrated Wrestling News. They used to like um, anything that had to do with a ring, boxing ring or wrestling ring, would go into that magazine. So, you know, early on, wrestling uh, photos and all that were covered with the boxing magazines. And a lot of people bought that stuff. And, you know, just... Benny, you had me take a picture of this one. What, now, what's the wrestling world? Is this your first one that you bought? No, no. Uh, I just like the, the bruiser saying there isn't a, a, a guy that I, I can't lick, which is probably <laughs> something you wouldn't say today. Well, maybe you wouldn't. <laughs> there isn't a guy I can't lick. So like, I, didn't Goldust use that line in the in the 90s, too? Oh, probably. Who knows? <laughs> he meant it in a different way, I think. Yeah. Then there was another one, the Big Book of Wrestling that came out. That was in 73. There were a lot of uh, wrestling publications that didn't last long. Some lasted a couple of years. Some were like very few and far between these wrestling magazines came out. It wasn't until um, the glory years uh, in the late early 70s when the wrestler and all that, that you started to get things like inside wrestling. And, you know, for me, th this was a tie. I used to love Inside Wrestling and Pro yes. Wrestling Illustrated because Pro Wrestling Illustrated, you got the uh, the color pinup in, in the middle. Yeah. But some of the uh, the um, outlines in uh, Inside Wrestling, Editor's Notebook with Peter King, On the Road with Craig Peters, you know, Body Slams and Pinfall, Names Making News with Dan Bill Shockett. After, yeah. Where Are They Now, uh, uh, Where Are They Now, excuse me. Hot seat, you know, it was the interview with the wrestler. But how about pre internet days? The one on one oh, tele dude. telephone video conference calling. The picture phones the picture by Bell phone. Telephone. Yeah. You, you could tell they were on. This is going back to 1981 now. So they were on to something here. You know, it's um, so funny about that, Joe. When yeah. I first saw those in the magazines, I yeah. thought, of course, I didn't know what the term work meant back then. Yeah. But I thought along the lines now that those things are a work, those things don't exist. You know, this is purely from the imagination of the writers and editors. But come to find the out, they the were real. Yes, they were they real, debuted yeah. at the New York's New York's, I guess, World's Fair in 1964. Wow. But they never caught on, you know. And and some people liken that to be that could have been the internet, you know, before the internet. I mean, I, I, I'm well, so yeah. surprised. And that's yeah, the only place true. in the mag in inside wrestling that I had ever seen these things. I don't know about you guys. Did you ever see them? Outside of the magazines at all, these, these I never picture phones? Those. I never saw the picture phones anywhere. Um, but with Inside Wrestling, I just left on the bottom left there was, you know, they had like the introducing, like Rocky Johnson was in one. Like this is how you were educated back then on wrestlers that weren't necessarily up in the Northeast at the time. Um, so you really got, and you read these stories. You know, as, as many pictures of uh, that were in the magazine, you had just as many stories. Oh, um, and Quite you know, outlandish, too. Yeah, and they were outlandish. Some were crazy. <laughs> um, you know, there was always a cover. But, you know, Bill After took a lot of, um, a lot of the, what, what do you got there? The Four Horsemen Inside Wrestling Collision Course. Yeah, look at that. No, th yeah, this was the uh, the Midnight Express versus the uh, original. Oh, that's Midnight right. Yeah, Express. okay, good to see it. There you go. Yep. That was a huge thing. That was huge. You know, and that's, you know, what, what year is that? 85? No, this what was, was uh, I believe, 1989. No, that was so 89. Was, and, wow, yeah. Okay. Unbelievable. Well, realize that it, it was a few months ahead. So this would have been like late 88. Okay. All right. I was in the Navy then. Okay. So, yeah. And you know, that to, was to, huge. And you know, they delve into history here sure. and particularly into World War II history when they were uh, describing the program, the grudge between Ivan Putsky and Ivan Golov. Oh, wow. And they, and they, yeah, and they delve back in history. They talk about 30, this is in 1981, mind you, 30 years of hatred, 10 minutes of revenge. And it was all about the Russian invasion of Poland back when Ivan was a little boy, oh, and so his education, yeah. yeah, and his antipathy and animosity towards 
the Russians and vice versa. So they use this backdrop, again, of World War II to kind of create a rivalry and a story between these guys, you know? We learn, we learn stuff from these things. Yeah, we learn history, man, you know? Everyone's like, oh, oh that's... Problem, that is, uh, Ivan Koloff was actually in Montreal at the time. And yeah. Ivan Putsky was in Texas all at that time, yeah, exactly. likely, in Houston, yeah. But Joe we didn't know. The other one that I like is The Wrestler. Um, there's a good oh, yeah. one, the Harley Race and Ric Flair. Bloody cover. That always sold. Bill After always told me the more blood on the cover, the more circulation they had, a lot, obviously, because, you know, they're geared towards the wrestling fan. But what I used to like, if you see in the bottom, it's called Beyond the Squared Circle. You would get these photos of wrestlers outside of the ring, like somewhere at poolside, somewhere eating dinner, almost to the point where they were normal people. And you were like, no way. But, you know, the mass wrestlers, for some reason, they always had their masks on, even at the dinner table or at home playing with their kids and all that stuff. And I thought that was kind of weird. Oh, absolutely. Just, yeah. absolutely. And, and you know what? The chinless mask that they have, that the luchadors have, that they can wear as they eat. Oh, I, yeah. I remember seeing uh, Mr. Wrestling 2 wearing one of those and eating oh, yeah. spaghetti. Case in point, yeah. right there. Another great thing I saw had to be, in, it was in Sports Review, I think yeah. it was in 1983, Okay. But it was Rocky Johnson sitting down with his young son, Dwayne, as Rocky was playing the acoustic guitar. Oh, I wow. knew then, wow. I'm telling you, I said, this 12-year-old kid, you never wow. know, might be following in his dad's footsteps. But it's in the magazine. It's yeah. there. A young speaking Rock. Of, speaking yeah. of Sports Review Wrestling, here's January 1983. Tommy Wildfire Rich, who's in the middle with that feud with uh, Buzz Sawyer, Sawyer in Georgia. Unbelievable. But come on. I, this was the out of all the publications. This is the one I always kind of liked, and I'm sure you can see by the pictures in the bottom right there of what I'm talking about. Apartment match wrestling. Oh. Um, this was considered. Uh, I got a hold of Bill after he talked about a photographer named by the name of uh, Theo Eret. He w lived out in L.A. And they were only allowed to publish these. And this this is the lowest circulated magazine, Sports Review, because a lot of the promoters uh, throughout the wrestling land did not want these women associated with wrestling because they thought it was too soft core porn. Huh. And as you can see, they're scantily clad. They're in the bikinis. Nothing compared to what we see nowadays. But, you know, could these women be the actual original divas? I mean, you know, when you think about it. <laughs> I dare say they were more scantily clad, Joe, and and there were uh, there were higher incidences of of wardrobe malfunctions. Boy, yeah. Yeah. you know, we we use the term titillating. I would say <laughs> titillating stuff. So. What work. are you reading there, Bruce? What do you got down there? I uh, just was trying to find my oldest edition of the Sports Review Wrestling, and it, it's from uh, November 1988, uh, oh, okay. featuring. Uh, uh, a headline that I, I'm kind of trying to remember, and that was the Rock and Roll Express breaking up. Right. And now there's no, um, what do you call it in that? Either. Apartment wrestling is there. No, no. That was the yeah. other thing I was looking for as I was going through. So yep. it was sometime around here when they discontinued that. Right. That was, it was in earlier editions yep. of this that I think, um, I mean, I, I lost over time. But, uh, yeah, this right. is just the oldest one that I've managed to, managed to keep. And, and, I, I and have it, to ask you guys all something, though. Go right I, I know I do this every month. I would analyze the rankings and be very critical of them. Did you guys do the <laughs> oh, yeah. I was always critical of the rankings. I was just looking at that, too, because uh, one of the things that was cool is uh, the, the in the tag teams at that point, Pat Tanaka and Paul Diamond, one of the – somebody uh, that Phil and I got to interview and, and meet and they're hanging out with for a bit. Bad company. That was so awesome, man. We're, so we're awesome. the AWA champions. They were uh, – You know, it's too bad because even before cable came around, like – um, I want to say, was it this one, The Wrestler? Yep, I see that. And yeah. The Wrestler, the, the cover here is Harley Race record-setting championship over Ric Flair. He regained the title, and it was like his 12th or 13th. Now, back then, that was the record. Obviously, Ric Flair has it now. But I read about this and um, before I even saw it on TV. So it was, it was so – the, the, the time was off with some of these. They were about a month or two behind, so to speak. Yeah, you know, case in point, several, several months. <laughs> case in point, here, I'll show you a magazine, guys, that illustrates this. A very seminal moment in wrestling history was the February 1984 death of David Von Erich in Japan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But the wrestler dated June 1984. 
right. had this on the cover. So this yeah. is the first acknowledgement of uh, of his Cassidy. passing. So that gives you an indication of you know the time frame in which these events do reach us. Of course, we knew about this in advance because sure. WWE right. Championship Wrestling. I think Joe McHugh announced this when it happened. Ten bell salute. Well, they did the ten bell salute. The ten bell salute, of course, and and every show worth their salt mentioned right. this and gave it the due respect. But yeah, again, several months from after the events happening, and wasn't it wasn't in May, May of nineteen eighty four. They did the parade of champions in Texas, where Kerry won't beat. Um, yes, as a matter of fact. So that would kind of supersede that day too. So yeah, there it is. Yep. So I don't know if you can see it that well. Yeah, there he is. For David, for Tech, Kerry wins the NWA title. For David, for Texas, for wrestling. I mean, you, those headlines stay with you. Like, September I, I, of '84, uh, in this yeah. case, and again, it was in May, as May, we, so. as you noted. So they were always so far ahead. I just didn't understand. I asked Bill that, and he said it was all about circulation. But um, it's it's amazing how far you know, month wise, they were. And the magazines were red hot. They were doing millions of dollars in business and wrestling magazines, and you know, when they came out, they knew they were going to, you know, even with the back hop, remember the old issues you can buy? We, Oh, yeah, ordered some, yeah. Yeah, they would oh. sell out because they were like, we, they didn't have enough room to hold these things. And, you know, when they sold out, they sold out. They didn't reprint anything, so. To that um, point, Joe, of sure. how quickly these magazines moved off of the newsstand. Oh, yeah. Well, this, uh, me being a fan and buying the magazines, propelled me to get a job at the very bookstore when I was a young oh, lad. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that and I, my responsibility was each Monday to stack the shelves. Yeah. So my my real motive wasn't the three dollar and thirty five cent minimum wage that I was receiving at the time. Right. It was to get first dibs on these magazines. Okay, and yep. and that's really what I did. So wow. Yeah. So they sold it. They flew off the shelves. And, yeah, we and, um. I had my logistical layout where I lived in Quincy. There was about four or five news shops. Tennessee news, all the corner stores. I knew if I couldn't find the one I was looking for there, I'd go to the next one. Sure. Very, I, I don't think I ever ran out. I don't think I ever missed an issue from 81 to 88. I don't believe I did. You um, and I both. Yeah. I had them and I, I had boxes upon boxes of them and so forth. And then of course, even in the later years, um, I would, the kid came out and me, even when my kids were born, I'd be going through a newsstand. And if I saw one, I'd pick one up and buy it. Uh, oh, absolutely. You know, later on, I'd be like, oh, my God, like in the 90s and 2000s and so forth, even though a lot of them aren't, aren't around anymore. But um, it was kind of neat, though, seeing that stuff. Another one we could talk about, Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Um, this one's a good one. That that picture of uh, Mill Mascaris in Dusty Rhodes. That's there. the inaugural issue, isn't it? Yeah, 79. Yeah. Um, Bill was sent down to, I want to say Georgia, somewhere down south. This is very rare that Bill was able to travel. He goes, you need a picture. And this is from uh, Stanley Weston. He goes, you need a picture of Dusty and Mill Maskers together. And Mill Maskers was a stickler for who he was taking photos with and so forth, unless he was in the ring. But a pose shot like that, Dusty Rhodes had to talk Mill Maskers into kneeling down for him. And Mill didn't take that very lightly. He was like, I'll do this once. You get it on one take, and that's it. He was, he was wow. so adamant. So, and, of course, I love the old um, – I, I know I this isn't the actual uh, color centerfold that was in that one. I just stole one off the internet with Morocco. But those are the types of centerfolds you got every month, and my room was plastered with them. They were pla absolutely plastered with yeah, them. Yeah, mine um, too. And the ratings. And they had that little thing in the middle called the Wrestling Enquirer where they made it look like a newspaper, which was just more stories upon more stories – that you will read about, you know, uh, on assignment with Liz Hunter, things like that. King's Court with Peter King, just a different way. They all had the wrestling letters in there. You know, I, I wrote wrestling letters into them all the time. Never got printed except for later on in 2000. But, um, you know, these are the things that made you a fan. You you waited for that. For me, it was like I said, it was the first Tuesday of every month where we got them. So they were just amazing publications back then. Hulk vs. Andre, the WWF braces for an all-out war. Look at the tail of the tape. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. And look, and, and how stupid are we? When was that photo taken of them? Probably back in like Shea Stadium, right? Those yeah, days? Oh, yeah. The Andre That's Afro crazy. days. You know, you know, we were supposed to believe even in '87 that they never fought each other. They never faced each other before. Hogan never slammed Andre before. But even though 
back in 1980 in Chase Stadium, he did that just that. So, uh, you know, we had to, we had to live in that make believe world for a little bit there too. So, <laughs> you know, and you know, as a wrestling fan and reading those magazines, and especially again, rich with illustration, great pictures, great action shots, still shots, things that you wouldn't see. You know, not only did the magazines predate the internet, but for some of us, they just predated VCRs, home video. Yep. So you couldn't freeze frame a shot and get right. a better look. So we learned how to do a lot of these wrestling moves oh, sure. just by virtue of studying these pictures. Yep, exactly. And we also learned what worked, what didn't work, yep. what hurt, what you shouldn't do, what was likely a, a, a bit of fantasy because, you know, the certain moves you could tell would just defy the laws of physics, you know? So it was really an education when it came to – you know, when it came to learning the moves and, and who didn't learn the figure four leg lock yeah. and, and try it on their brother or their neighbor <laughs> or their friends, you know? I, I put it on my art teacher in seventh grade. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right. How, um, how was your grade? For that? Yeah, there you go. My, the um, one thing I remember now, don't forget a lot of these pictures in the uh, wrestling magazines back then, uh, outside of wrestling's main event, were mainly black and white photos. But right. I studied every single ring and I could tell you what arena it was at, what town it was in. Like I could always tell <laughs> what Madison Square Garden's ropes look like compared to Boston's, compared to Philadelphia, compared to Landover, Maryland, where I hated those rings in Landover, Maryland, because they had no turnbuckles. They were like almost the old type boxing rings where they would tape the corners together. Yeah. You yep. knew they were in, in, in Landover, Maryland. You just knew it, uh, you know, unless, of course, you knew who the ring announcers were. But just the photos back then of the wrestling rings to me was like, yep. Oh, that's a mid-Atlantic ring. I know that, you know. And you could tell the Omni, the ring in the Omni too, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And then, and then you got familiar with the rules. You know, the night that uh, Hogan didn't beat Nick Bockwinkle when it was overturned because he uh, threw him over the top rope. Well, I never knew that rule existed until I read the wrestling magazine was like, wait a second. In the WWF, they throw everybody over the top rope over the, all the time and no one gets disqualified. Right. But here it's a disqualification. You know, mm -hmm. Benny, what, what, how did you get educated on wrestling with your magazines? Well, like I said, I mean, you know, I didn't even know that there was other territories. And that, you know, I see uh, J.C. Dykes in the Infernos. I see John Tolos, you know, and Fred Blassie out west. I mean, it was like it was so eye opening that, you know, and the funny thing is, um, you know, I read these stories. J.C. Dykes right thinking, there. Yeah. Yeah. They sounded like. Like, how do these guys know this stuff? These man, these reporters, you know, little did I know they made all this crap up and you know in the in the office. And they I did, tell you yeah. what, you know, I, I I had a very long career in finance and accounting, but you know, I, I've written, I think now 34 stories for the uh the pro wrestling stories website. If sure. I had a do-over, I, I would have written for the magazines. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Look, you guys you guys kind of do. You, you two, both Benny and, and Joe, you guys yep. write for the Modern Day Magazine. Yeah, yeah I guess the equivalent of a magazine. It's paperless, but... There you go. So Who doesn't think, think that that picture of a young Bill Aptor... I don't know if you've ever seen the Grand Wizard back in the day without his gimmick, but uh, oh, yeah, Bill Aptor looked a little bit like a young... Er, young Roth. Bill Aptor, like a young yeah. Ernie Roth, maybe, too. There is a picture out there of similar, so a little bit of a resemblance there. Yeah, Bill Joe, Aptor's Joe, fun, fun fact, Joe, that Bill sure. Aptor lived literally... Uh, in 1970 and 1971, I think he lived in Massapequa Park. Massapequa, he, yep. He lived within walking distance of my house, and he shopped at the same Grand Union that my mom did. Wow. I'm, I'm sure I passed by him in the aisle. Like you know, I didn't know who he was at the time. But if you if you ever get a chance, that's read amazing. His, if you ever get a chance, read his book. Uh, his oh yeah, no, I, I I have his book. It's a great book. Yeah. And that story he talks about how he had to go to Baltimore. And he couldn't tell his father because his father was a wrestling fan, too. Um, yeah. that he couldn't tell his father what Stanley Weston told him. And they, we need a photographer at the arena that night. It was the night oh. that Koloff beat San right. Martino. And he yes. had to keep that secret. And it ate right. at him and ate at him because his father was a huge Bruno San Martino fan. Everybody in New York, obviously, was a huge Bruno right. San Martino fan. But when you read these stories, that's when it like crosses the real, the the real side of things. You know, you're at the dinner table and your your father's all upset because Ivan Koloff, the Russian bear, just dethroned the uh world champion of the WWF or the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, I should say. But you know what a shocker. 
Yeah, yeah there was a shocker. It was huge. Uh, and I'm glad that we're able to see video of that now. Thank God to the internet, you know, and seeing that and just, you could tell by the crowd how upset they were. And, you know, he, uh, Koloff had to get the hell out of that arena so quick. I can't imagine that title change taking place in New York. That would just be off the wall. And I mean, it's so funny, like, when you when you see that, you know, Koloff body slammed him, climbed yeah. up, you know, and, and literally, like, climbed the rope and, like, gave him a knee drop, which yeah. probably happens, like, 88 times uh, on Monday night. Yeah, exactly. Raw. Oh, yeah. And, but, you know, it, was, it, was, it resulted in a clean pinfall. Yeah. All right, so we're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to talk about the ratings. We always love those rating sections. I know ESO loved them, so we'll be right back. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. Tired of that same old, same old breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Same old tasting scrambled eggs, burger, that dinner steak, ribs, or pork chops. Why not add a little bit of spice or just a touch of heat to make the difference? Change that scrambled egg with a little bit of Johnny Fabulous's John Cena Sr.'s Million Dollar Jalapeno Hot Sauce. Great on burgers, steaks, chops, and those barbecued ribs. And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage. Ask for Jack. Do you treat your dog as part of the family? <laughs> well, so do we. So why not celebrate your pup's birthday with the ultimate party box? Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Party Pup Info, and let us make your pup's party or any celebration perfection. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Sport and non-sport cards, wrestling items, Autographed items. We buy, sell, and trade. M&J Video Games and Collectibles, located at 1049 Queen Street, Southington, Connecticut. Call us at 1-860-479-9223 or 860-93-GAMES. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Wrestling Remembered. I'm your host, Joe Wittaday Lowry. Of course, we're joined by my fellow cohorts, Phil DeCesare, the player in ESO, who's just slowly making his way back. And you got to love that. I a little dramatic. Come on. You know, I'm the, the, I'm the 30 champion right now, and I don't even have that shirt. What's up with that? <laughs> this is a one of a kind right now. Soon so, to be available on the money. That NFL. needs to be replicated. I need one of those. We, we got to get these on the shop. We got to get these on uh, Pro Wrestling Tees and get that thing absolutely, going. Absolutely, absolutely. We will get that. We'll work. We will work on that uh, sometime this week. That's hot merch. And loose can. Don't worry, Ryan. I am awake. Now, uh, one of the things. <laughs> one of the things that I loved and I actually hated back in the day were the wrestling ratings. Um, early on, you know, if a guy made a sudden heel turn, it didn't make the magazine for a couple of months and vice versa. If somebody became a good guy. So you always had that, you know, at one point, somebody who was really popular was no longer on the most popular and vice versa and all that stuff. But one thing that really did irk me, and I think it was somewhere around early 83 is when they took the uh, world championship status away from Bob Backlund. Yeah. Um, yeah I'll, I'll throw one of the magazines up right now. I'll, I'll do um, Inside Wrestling. Where are we? So Inside Wrestling, if you see it on the official wrestling ratings, you had Bob Backlund as a world champion, Nick Bockwinkel as the AWA world champion, and Dusty Rhodes, at, this is December of 81, as the NWA world champion. Um, I do believe in early 83, because Bob Backlund was wrestling the same guys over and over, um, it was a steady stream of competitors, very rarely wrestled outside the Northeast. For some reason, they took that world title um, moniker away from him, from, from the WWF, I should say. Um, but that seemed like a prelude to what was actually going to take place. Do you guys have an opinion on that? Anybody can speak up. It just, What's your opinion on that, taking away 
Bob Backlund's five and a half year world title status. Well, you know, if I may just for a moment and say, before they, they took away the status, it almost seemed like they had this jihad against Backlund. There was, you know, he's constantly, at least in the magazines and not on TV, but always mired in controversy, you know, winning with his opponent's foot draped on the rope or the referee is, you know, slow counting his, you know, his shoulders and quick counting his opponents. But they were always coming at it with the angle like Backlund is, I guess Backlund is protected is kind of how the magazines, they were, the magazines were trying to gin up some controversy. And I guess in a way, and maybe just to make it more exciting, you know, but almost like invalidating his his reign up, up to that point, or at least that was my impression by many of the, the articles and, and the tone of the articles too. So I think there was a buildup towards that, you know, to me, it didn't come so out of the blue necessarily, but I always felt like they had a little you know, maybe something against him or they knew something that we didn't know. I don't know what you guys think, but that was my impression. I saw that. I saw that, Joe. <laughs> Mired. Bill's what did Joe do? <laughs> Mired. 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 Mired in controversy. I love it. You gotta love it. <laughs> Penny, what do you think? Did you agree with that? Take it away, Bob Backlund's um, world title <laughs> moniker there? No, and I ha I have no idea why they did that. <clears throat> I always thought that the magazines were partial to the WWF. Like you know, Bruno to me, they Bruno right. was on the cover more than anybody. Sure, and I think maybe I don't know, maybe they're trying to like tilt the scales a little bit, and you know, to to you know, give a little bit more uh, you know homage to the uh, NWA and the AWA. I don't know. Uh, ESO, what do you, do you remember that? Did you get a magazine with him not being listed? No, it, it, was, it was a little bit before my time. I, okay. uh, I, I don't have much on that. It did make for interesting reading because I do believe the first couple of months they started doing that, they put this huge editorial note inside the ratings area uh, where it said that we will no longer fish, uh, recognize Bob Backlund as a world champion because, and they gave all these scenarios where he doesn't travel anymore, he's only on the East Coast. Um, he's not wrestling. Uh, I think at the time he, he was only wrestling bad guys, rule breakers, not wrestling good guys. It was like this very, but then again, you know, did, did we know something that they didn't know? Because they, as soon as they put it back on Backlund, he lost to the Iron Sheik and Hulkamania was born a month later. Right. And you talk about going the tale of two extremes from a guy who never left the Northeast except for the trips to Japan and the occasional NWA trip down South to Hulk Hogan, who wrestled 300 all over the world as a world champion, you know? So, you know, did they know something that we didn't know? Did they get the fix? Was the fix in there? Did that, they do that as like, okay, we're going to take it away, and then as soon as he gets it back, he's going to lose the title. I mean, I don't know. You guys tell me at this point. Yeah, but, I mean, Bruno, I mean, Bruno occasionally left the Northeast, but not, you know, not very often. Yeah. I mean, and you, you know, Ganya or or Bachwinkle, they they were pretty much restricted to you know just several states. So yeah. it sounded kind of arbitrary. I remember, um, Phil, you could probably attest to this. Um, the Garden towards Backlund, the end of Backlund's reign, he was getting booed. Oh he yeah, you were, were chanting yeah. "boring." His howdy doody chants. Um, <laughs> I think it. I think it all took place after the Snooker rivalry. To be honest with you where he just wasn't looked at as that golden boy anymore, where it was like enough's enough already. This is getting old. You're right. And it was he it, changed yeah. his appearance too, didn't he? I mean, yeah, he shaved his yeah. head with the singlet and all that stuff. Yeah. The yeah, the crew cut. yeah. He did more cardio. He stopped lifting. So he kind of became flabby and just he, was, he's lost yeah. a lot of his, muscles, his physique kind of deteriorated. It did. It did. Yeah. It so definitely you did. Think, you think Backlund's problem was he never adopted a, a character? Because if, if you if you notice, it was like at that time, everybody became something other than just an average Joe. You know, they became more of a character at that point, and back then became obsolete. Well, he was supposed to be like your blue-collar, don't-break-the-rules type of guy. Uh, and I mean, yeah, at the time when A-Team's coming water. out, and you've got uh, you've got these rule-breakers from the mil military, and, and then you've oh, yeah. got, uh, oh, what was the other big show at that point? Oh, Knight Rider. Yeah, I, I mean, Bob Backlund. Yeah. He didn't fit the the 
the mold of thought, time, I don't think. I, I want to say, go ahead, go ahead, Phil. I was just going to say, another moment came. Of course, like you say, the Snuka feud definitely did start to change things. I yeah. also think when superstar Billy Graham uh, tore up the old winged eagle belt on TV and back yeah. when, of course, was yeah. crying, you know, I think at that moment, that, that whole episode might have changed some perceptions too, you know. If anyone remembers The Sopranos, yeah. Johnny Sack... The yep. gangster cried when he was arrested at his daughter's wedding, and henceforth he just, you know, he it lost that, yeah, you know, that respect of, <laughs> that existed, if you call that, in the mob. So I think that might have been one of those moments, too, for better or not, that that, that uh, Backlund started that to That whole uh, superstar food. Billy Graham angle, I mean, he, it, in his autobiography, Billy Graham says that uh, when he did that karate gimmick and everything, and he came back to the WWF, he was very depressed. Yes, and, and Vince Jr. was trying to give him that run and all that, and they needed to do something to get that feud over again, even though it wasn't a very long feud, because um, I think they only fought once at Boston Garden, never mind how many times they wrestled at Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. but, they, but I think they knew the tide was turning, so they needed a new belt. They gave Graham the go-ahead to tear up that belt, literally rip it out of its – I mean, Bruce, yeah. have you seen that video? Of Superstar Graham tearing no, up. No, I got, I got to go back and watch that. That should be uh, that would be a pretty cool. He thing tears it up. He's slamming it on the ground. Vince is yelling, "What do you think you're doing?" Yeah, you it's kind of funny doing? how the WWE WWF the, they kind of reuse that thing because that kind of reminds me of when who was it who uh, was Mister Perfect who was smashing up the belt what ten years later yeah. for uh, you know uh, uh, on uh, when he stole it or something happened there. Right. So yeah. So I mean. And then, of course, Backlund crying, why, 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 screaming, and then he kind of freaked That's out. Arrogant. Could you imagine a character? Could you imagine uh, a character crying? Because now, I mean, yeah. they're not going to. That's not going to get somebody over. That's no, going to get you not. laughed at. Yeah. Real quick, out to the shout, baby cakes, another five bucks. Cheers to Jake. All right, Jake. Oh, you are All awesome, right. Jake. Miss Joe. Thank you. All right, My lady in red on SmackDown. So Jade, I gotta, I'll watch when I get out of here. But Jade Cargill's in red, I guess, on SmackDown. Yeah, right? sorry, yeah. Wow, there you go. Nice, nice. So, yeah, Maria Davis, yeah, she's rocking the red tie. And I, I, I love Jade. Something's going on there. Jeez, we have to tune into that. But, um, yeah, I, I was – the future. I just didn't think that Backlund's popularity definitely went down after the snooker and all that stuff. But I also want to say that they knew the writing was on the wall, and that transition began with that ugly green belt – the ugly green belt that did nobody any justice. And unfortunately Hulk Hogan had to win it. And then they ought, they changed it within a month or two of him winning that title uh, with the 84 championship. So, you know, that that's, those are some of the things that irked me with the ratings taking away that. And of course, I remember when Andre turned bad against um, Hogan, he was still listed as the most popular wrestler <laughs> in one of the magazines that everyone's like, and it's obviously two months later. And you're like, wait a minute, and then the next month he went, there was a blurb in the ratings where he went from the most popular wrestler to the most hated. And you know, Joe, there was a time and in, in more than one occasion where a wrestler in the very same issue was atop both the most loved and most popular, yep. I should say, and most hated. Yep. I can't think of who it was, but I recall just on a was couple of occasions. Was it Roddy Piper? It might have been Piper. Someone someone polarizing Rick like Piper. Yeah. I would thought appear actually on both. Too. What's Who that? Was it, I think Ric Flair did that too. Flair somehow. might have been too. Again, yeah, these are just super polarizing guys, you know? And, yeah. uh, you know, so that was a confusing thing for a young reader to, to kind of understand now, too. One of the things I, I didn't really get any photos of, but what I recall is um, the old year-end awards, Pro Wrestling Illustrated year-end awards, Rookie of the Year, Match of the Year, and all that stuff. And Bill After, they, they really did. They said... They used to have to work overtime because people would mail in ballots. Yep, there you go. There's the annual right there. They would mail in those ballots, and they would spend hours upon hours going through those ballots. This is pre-internet days now. Remember that. There you go. Yeah. Uh, 84. The, and he says one of the greatest thrills that he got um, was delivering those plaques. Uh, a lot of wrestlers made a big deal of them. A lot of wrestlers respected the magazine, so it was like getting an award with, you know, like, again, we're talking pre-internet days, pre-Hulk Hogan days. We're talking, you know, yeah, 1989. There you go. Who's the tag team for 1989? That'd be interesting. It's got to well, be I'll go, let me Warriors, go. maybe? No. 
Maybe. Warriors seem to win it like every year in the early 80s, 84. They, did. they won it a number of years it's in a row. Through. Yeah, I don't know, 89. Steiners? So that, uh, rookie Doom? of the year is the Destruction Crew. Oh, okay. there you go. Inspirational wrestler of the year is Eric Embry. Oh, oh wow. Most Quite improved the wrestler of the year. Most improved? Scott Steiner. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, there's another thing I wanted you guys just thought of. Um, where, where are we? I know you can't see it, but do you guys see where it says names making news uh, on the screen? It's right next to where it says the insider. And then there's names making news. Can you yes, guys? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. There's a photo on the bottom right of a guy with a beard, white hair, by the name of Ed Boulder. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Boulder is making waves in the AWA. He's continuing his winning streak. So that turned out to be Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Brother by the Bruce, way. So. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Manager of the Year, Bobby Heenan. Manager of the Year, Bobby Heenan. Feud of the Year, Ric Flair versus Terry Funk. Oh, wow. Most Die popular quick, wrestler but, yeah. of the year is, uh, no surprise, late 80s. He must have mm -hmm. won a ton of it years in a row. He had Let's to have won see. a ton of a year in a row. Yeah, well, it, it, it lists them in there. Most hated wrestler of the year. A little surprised on this one because this was my my Not favorite wrestler. So. Oh, that's probably what the uh, Hogan. Um, the uh, Hogan split, yeah. Mega Power split, yeah. Now, one thing we haven't touched upon is the part of the magazines. Oh, what do you got there? Who's that? Match of the uh, Flavor Steamboat, yeah. Oh, they absolutely. Did they wrestle over a thousand times? They said. They, I they bet. That's yeah, who the tag team of the year was. And no surprise there. They were tag team of the year in the NWA and then in the WWE. Oh, the Brain Busters. Oh, Terry. Oh, oh, oh. Arnie Arnie and Tully. Tully. Yeah. Arnie Arnie and Tully. Tully. Now, one of the things that I liked about the magazines is the advertisements. Remember the advertisement guys that were in here? These are just a sample of some of the ads that were in there. Um, mail order stuff. I, I too wanted an Atlas body in seven days because I didn't want to get sand kicked in my face at right. the <laughs> as it Charles showed. Atlas and dynamic tension. <laughs> and then on, on and then on the other pages, you can get up to five, ten, fifteen pounds. Uh, that way I can carry that gorgeous girl uh, with the bikini uh, at the beach. You know, so these <laughs> guys, you know, they had a, um, a direct marketing campaign. Uh, of course, if you wanted to learn karate as well as get taller, you could mail in order stuff for that. So what's you know, that weapon it, thing? You don't need a, you don't need you a don't gun. Need Is a that gun. the Cobra? That's something like that. Yeah. It pops out. It's like a nightstick or something. Or Santino like would say the Cobra. <laughs> and Phil, I thought of you. What about getting strong arms for just five bucks? There you go, man. <laughs> you know, those what are just you? some of them. In the small engine repair, I think you talked about that one, uh, Benny, right? Small engine repair. Yes. You can make five bucks an hour. And it was five that same hour. old guy's face on that every. I go, don't they ever get any new models for this stuff? <laughs> because for 10 years, that's all you saw. That is well, all they you were paying know. him five bucks an hour to post for those pictures. It's like, but <laughs> they paid the bills. Bill after said they paid the bills. These guys always paid their bills on time and they wanted that and they made money. They I did. always wondered about the locksmith ad. Was that training to learn how to install locks or to pick locks? No, I mean, locks. how many criminals did they groom oh, with, yeah. that, with that? With oh, that course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that one says make up to twelve dollars an hour. There you go, <laughs> and even money. more if you can pick the lock. You probably got a clothing allowance too to buy that uniform for a locksmith. I didn't know locksmiths wore had uniforms back then. <laughs> but um, as, as hey, I listen, can I sell you some sea monkeys? <laughs> there, there you go. Love those. Hey, man, I, I bought those. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, yeah. I think the no, I'm sorry. I, well, I did buy, no, I bought sea horses. I think horse. only, I remember those. I think the closest I ever did was I had to trace that beagle to go to art school. You draw that? tippy, you just yeah, draw, draw tippy, tippy or whatever. Yeah, it, was. it was like a beagle, and all I did, I got lazy. I just took tracing paper and put it up, and then you had to send it in. They tell you if you were good enough to be an artist or not. <laughs> I, ne I never heard back. <laughs> in TV oh, Guide, they had that next to the instruction school. You could draw either <laughs> Pepe, um, Pepe, Pepe the turtle, or something else. <laughs> all right, folks. Well, I drew a hangman. They gave me a scholarship. There you go. Before we uh, wrap up, let's, let's take this last break and we'll come back with some closing thoughts. We'll be right back. And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB.
You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence, Collision Specialists, 631-261-6420. That's 631-261-6420. Auto Excellence. Jimmy, I gotta take a dump. What? No, I mean I need a dumpster. (sighs) Well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York, 631-900-DUMP. Elm Logistics, for all your logistic needs, call 631 299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics. Pride, performance, and partnerships. All right, bills are paid. We are back to wrestling. Remember, with our final thoughts for the night. Uh, Real quick, guys, did you guys ever um, get your magazines in the mail at all? Or did you always go? Yes, one year. For my like eleventh birthday, I had a year subscription to Inside Wrestling, oh, wow. and you know what? It came later than it did on the newsstand. So oh, occasionally, I'd go to the newsstand and buy it, and then get it in the mail too. But it was a birthday gift, so you know what am I going to do? Send it back, Bruce? What about you? Did no, you I think my parents were always hoping that every month I would outgrow it and stop asking them <laughs> to buy it. But uh, I kept it up for quite a few years. You realize how much money they could have saved? I mean, oh, the subscriptions were like ten bucks versus. A buck seventy-five to two ninety-nine an issue. Yeah, mom and dad, you were stupid on that part. There you go, Benny. Did you ever uh, mail away for stuff like that? I vaguely remember getting a subscription to Wrestling Eye. I think that was the oh, one. Okay. Otherwise, Eye. I always bought them at the. Uh, it was uh, Joyce and Nat's uh, Three Fingered Nat, uh, ah. the luncheonette. Yes, I have very vivid memories of Three Fingered Nat because you know on the uh, on the odd occasion, you know. The, the wrestling magazines were on the bottom, you know, yep. about two feet higher was the Playboy. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and every once in a while, I mean, I thought, eh, let me, uh, and every time Nat busted me, and he always pointed at me and said, you, out, and nah. with, his, with his nubbins pointed at me. Uh-huh. He really only did have three fingers, and he used right. that hand to eject me. <laughs> Intimidation, man. Oh, it's yeah, funny. that was pretty scary. I just had a flashback. I think my parents knew I had a, a real crazy addiction. When I woke up, instead of the Easter bunny basket, I got an Easter basket full of wrestling magazines. That's and love, was, man. One of them was Don nice. Morocco on wow. the cover with his uh, Don Morocco on the cover with his Intercontinental title. Um, so I was, I woke up, I was like, oh, so they now they know I like wrestling magazines. I, so. I think that was a sports review magazine. Yeah, that was one was sports it? review wrestling. I, yep, yes, it it's was. so bad. We read, we re, we read them, we reread them. We just oh, yeah. so many times, cover to cover. Back and forth over the excellent years. Bath- excellent bathroom reading. No oh. doubt about it. No doubt about it. Unbelievable. Yeah. And then uh, later on, though, I, I wanted to touch upon this. These are a couple of the other magazines, Wrestling Eye, WCW. But WWF Magazine, remember right before that, it was Victory, World Wrestling Fan yeah. Victory. Those are the magazines that Vince started that actually kind of stopped Bill Lapper and his crew from being allowed ringside at all the all the events. They yeah. were they were only allowed ringside uh, down NWA AWA territories, believe it or not. Yeah, wrestling's main event was that George Napolitano. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. And that Starcade '83, the first Starcade where Flair uh, beat Race in the cage. There you go. Yeah. There you go. What do you got, Bruce? I see you put. I mean, if you want to talk WWE magazines, I've got uh, yeah. I've got them all still sitting in the. Uh, in I mean, you got it. So. I know, I know. WF Magazine came out a little later than Main Event, but Main Event was onto something with the glossy photos. Yeah, a lot of a lot of colored glossy. My first wrestling magazine that my oldest wrestling magazine that I have, I think, is a is a Main Event or one one of those. Oh yeah. When that came out, I was like, oh my god, glossy color photos. Like Pro Wrestling Illustrated only had the color um, centerfold, but when Main Event came out, everything was color. I was actually. But the writing in the after mags, I thought, was more imaginative and better writing, too, you know? And look at, you know, all of us, to some extent, not only have we become readers, but writers, you know, whether it be for a newspaper or newspapers, in my case, or wrestling periodicals like you guys. I mean, you know, you can't be a writer if you're not a reader. And that really got us, I think, on the track of reading. So, you know, we we do owe a lot to to Bill Apter. And you know what? I wanted to ask, too, is Bill Apter in any Hall of Fame? He's in the um, pro he's in the wrestling. One in Albany. 
Oh, and the yeah, Albany one. Albany. Good. Yeah, well, well, one. he needs to come uh, to the WWE Hall Absolutely. of Fame as well. That's, that's another no-brainer. I think, yeah. I think- I think I, you might. See, I think you might see a lot of that now that Vince is no longer. Affiliated. I think so, and, and, and if and anyone deserved it in terms of uh, being a, a scribe of, of of pro wrestling, there's another word. He's a scribe. I, for what, he, for what he did for wrestling, absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. I believe no, the, the the Hall of Fame in Albany is the only one that actually has a physical location. It's yeah. now located in, in the MVP uh, MVP arena, and they actually uh, they have yeah. Bruno's original belt there. That's oh, okay, awesome. Yep. Well, that sounds like a great place. Yeah, that that was the one that was in the Midwest for a while, right? In Texas. I don't know. I know it's I know it's over at the MVP arena now. Um I don't know looking for a home. when it's open for public to the public, but I know that they have like uh oh they have some stuff from May Young. They have the Bruno belt was this thing I wanted to go see. Uh I just oh, yeah. haven't had a chance yet. The blue one, the blue velvety belt one that the first one. Well they I just know they say it's Bruno's Bruno's belt. It's the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. So that one right there, the one he's wearing there. I have I haven't seen it I'll yet. So when I do, a, don't worry. I'm gonna record when I go when I finally get to go up there. We well, will record it. I might have to beat you there. <laughs> <laughs> or hey, we can always take a road trip there. There you go. Now there That's was a run-in. Right. Maria Davis pointed out Bill After did have a run-in with Vince McMahon when Vince took over the day when Vince took over from his father. Um, because he was no longer allowed at ringside because he felt he was a lot of them weren't allowed at ringside anymore. Craig Peters, Bill Apter. Um, I do believe even Paul Heyman was banned for a while uh, when he was a young kid taking photos. It, it was all because Vince had the bigger vision of I'm going to have my own magazine out now and I'm going to do it this way. We're gonna, you know, why do I have to? Because a lot what the wrestling magazines did for the wrestlers, they did stuff that the wrestlers couldn't do themselves. And that was promoting the re- If you got it like Jerry Lawler even says it. If you got in the wrestling magazines, that means you made it back then. Yeah, and, right. And, and and everybody who was a wrestler back then scoured those wrestling magazines. And a lot of times, if you made it, you'd go to your next show. The, the, someone would throw the magazine at you and go, well, you made it, kid, and here you are. And there's a picture of you. So you made it. Yeah, so, WWE the not only did that, they won up them. I mean, the quality of oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the product no doubt about it. Yeah. was oh, like Steve, second Steve to none. Right? Everything yeah. was... You know the the quality of the paper, everything yeah. they they really took the time to. Well, you got to go back to right. the eighties. Everything got bigger, better, and brighter. You so, know what yeah. I mean? You know when you look at even you know the first page is as thick as as a regular pro wrestling illustrated cover, where yeah. the the, the the cover is even thicker. I mean, yep. they yeah. really they stock, they man. upped the game when it came to the wrestling yeah. magazines. You know, they yeah. stay, they thumb their nose at Aptor on that. Listen, I, I respect what Aptor did. Oh, no. I, once I, I was I able agree. to start collecting these, you know, the, the Aptors were the, like, you know, the second store. I, I wanted my WWE magazine first. That's called tricolor photos. That's what those are. Those are, they, they catch your eye. They gleam at any angle and all that stuff. The only time you got that with the old Aptor mags was probably the cover right i would say that would be it but it wasn't yeah. even that i mean it's nicer the, the, oh, yeah. the oh, average it. page in wwe magazine is the cover of after magazines right no i know i get you i totally understand it uh you know it was a you know bill always speaks highly of vince and all that stuff but you know there was a falling out and you know and i and i mentioned this on the show before the night that hogan won the belt hogan knew how important after was and gave him the first photos and Hogan got in trouble for that too, by the way, um, for having the green belt in the hotel and having Bill Abner come over and take pictures and all that stuff. And Bill put it in the magazines because it was it was legit. And uh, Vince did, did that didn't go over well. That did not go over well. Uh, Bill Abner tried to get into a couple of arenas after that, and he was, you know, said no, no more for you. So you know that it's a tricky situation. But Bill Abner, WWE Hall of Fame, yeah. If you're gonna put a guy like Thunderbolt Patterson in or Paul Heyman. Yeah, I would definitely get after is my choice. Yeah. To this day, Pro Wrestling of- Illustrated is still published. Yeah, it is published. Yeah, it's like, amazing. A lot of it, a lot of these are digital now. I I I want to say the wrestler and inside wrestling are like two and one now, right? You flip them over, it's the inside wrestling, and if you turn it over, it's the wrestler. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I remember that. Well, I remember Re- seeing that a couple of years ago. Pro Wrestling Illustrated is still in print a little yep. bit, if I remember yep. correctly, but the no, rest of them, I believe, are all digital. Is. Did anyone working. get the red PWI T-shirt? I never ordered it. That's a the classic. Hogan, I still see Hogan those Hogan around sometimes. 
Hogan used to model that in the magazine. Yeah, it looks so the- cool. The oh, red, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Hey, one last thing about the magazines. They used to have the sure. correspondence reports where yeah. they would have all the territories covered oh, yeah. and yep. major cards. And, you know, you'd have the results of all the undercard, un- you know, under, but a nice description of the main event. Oh, yeah. You yes. know, which was great because they would paint a picture with words. And, you know, to me, that was pretty evocative. And, you know, before before even cable, you kind of mm-hmm. learned a little bit about the style of the wrestlers just by virtue of of reading these written accounts of the matches. I always thought that was very cool. Yeah, which where, where were the arena reports? Was that in uh, Pro Wrestling the Illustrated? Arena, had... It might have been an insider. The uh, the wrestler. Gosh, I mean, no, I should know this off the top. Illustrated. It was actually well, at least that I remember. Yeah, here it is. Oh, here it is. News from the wrestling capitals. Inside wrestling, for example. I, I Oh yeah, that too. Yep. That's another one. Yeah, that was on, PWI. And Phil, on occasion, they would have something from Boston, Massachusetts. They would. Yeah, yeah. God. For years, they never showed anything from Boston, but now all of a sudden they started getting them, and I was like, all right, now. Yeah, this yeah. Is we have New Haven, Connecticut, in this yep, particular one right here. And they would say submitted by right by somebody, whoever the person was that submitted. Yeah. It. Yep. That was yep. the internet back then. That was the internet. That's how that's how things work back then. They would get these uh, matches in the uh, in the mail, and they'd go from there. And one of the other things I figured about: what about the old um, what do you call it? The um, programs, major league wrestling programs. Remember those? Oh yeah, those those were kind of neat. Those you were had to get one when you went to a card. Yeah, those you were, absolutely those were had big, to. Big syndication. I think I have my first one here. Oh, second one. These ones right here. Yes. Bob Backlund, and it, it seemed like if you went to like, um, I've know, got that one somewhere, Joe. It would change like, um, it would say right over here, like Philadelphia instead of Boston. Yeah, it was. It was. It, they went to a type shop and you know printed up so many of them and so yeah. forth. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Line. There you go. Nice. Now that thing that screams, man, that translates oh, yeah. right through. Wow. Now here's a yeah. screwed up part. So, at the day of the event, you could buy it for five bucks. Yeah. Right. But you could buy it on the newsstand for a two ninety nine two weeks oh, yeah. later. Well, wow. you, had to, you had to pay for the gas to get it there. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had a chance to get it autographed at the event, so you know. Oh yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> no, my right, father you... was too cheap. We were not getting any autographs. No. <laughs> any, any final thoughts, guys, before we wrap this up? Well, I plan on keeping these magazines for another forty years. I don't know oh, if I can. Something. If Some not of them, anyway. Them. Yeah. Yep, they're definitely worth something. That is for sure. And again, again, hearkening back to a time when we had so many territories and just, you know, whether it be different wrestling rings, different arenas, different styles of wrestling, you know, just everything. There, It was not homogenous like today. It was exactly. just so, so varied and so different and a colorful landscape. And uh, these magazines did a, a, a great service, I think, to the fans and, and to the business. So. They definitely made me the wrestling fan the wrestling fan I am today. There's the no savant that you've become. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. As my father would that call we've me become. the idiot savant. Hey. <laughs> the rain man. Yeah, definitely <laughs> after. Yeah. 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 Definitely. All right. So what do we got coming up? We got uh, true crime on Monday, right, Benny? Yes. True crime. I have a feeling Bruce is going to be bartending this weekend. Am I right? Yeah, you got it. I'll be uh Tomorrow night and uh, and uh, Sunday, I'll be. You work there. in Easter. You work. I'm Easter? trying to take. Off, well, I took off that Saturday, so I know I'll at least be able to do a, a recap of the first night of WrestleMania. I'm trying to be able to get. I'm trying to get off the second night so that we can do a, a recap on the second night. But if not, I at least will have my phone with me so that uh, you know I, I can at least jump in and you know say hello from there. Nice, nice. And I got my ridiculous recap show. Um, some actually some late breaking news coming up, so you want to t- stay tuned for that on Sunday. So okay, I got some good stuff for that. Not a long show; it'd be about a half hour, but uh, I'll get everybody up to speed, uh, especially after what happens on SmackDown tonight. We'll be up to date, but uh, we'll have some AEW news, some WWE news, and uh, all that good stuff. So Benny, Monday night, true crime. Phil, you are you with us then too? Or? I think I'm going to be on Monday night with you guys. Yes, unless right. I get called away, but I should be covering the uh, yeah some of the court escapades. Hey, hey Joe, can I just uh, mention something before we go? Sure. So if you look at the original re- the wrestling remembered logo yeah. that we have, that okay. was inspired by the old wrestling magazines. Yes, specifically yes. Wrestling Insider. So right. I just wanted to mention that because that was one of the uh, one of the ideas behind when when it, we we did that. Well, if you could see on the upper right-hand part of the screen, that is the watermark that I've made. 
um yeah. you sent this to me and i just oh I there just, it is yeah you a big uh yeah yeah well now go look at uh if you go look at inside wrestling you oh, can yeah, see definitely. the inspiration there oh yeah right there there it is boom inside wrestling we got it we got it all right folks we are out of time i want to thank everybody who's in the chat lively chat as always jojo thank you so much for the five dollar donation we gotta love that yes. um i want to wish everybody a good friday and if we don't hear from you guys everyone have a happy and say Easter. Easter. Yes. Yeah. We Hope the bunny's good to everybody. We're going to be cooking some ham. So uh, that, that's what's on the menu. I, I always look for the food in the holidays. So you know me. <laughs> but that's it for us, guys. Um, anything else? You guys good? Good for now, man. <laughs> AEW Wednesday night. I'll be going live, but I'll talk about that probably uh, before oh, then cool. anyway. All right. So. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right, folks. That's going to do it for us. Thank you all for tuning in live and on the replay for wrestling. Remember to I'm there he is. Jay Lowry on behalf of Monty and the Pharaoh and the family and Phil DeCesare, the player in ESO. Have a great Friday night, guys. Take care. What a day. Peace.